What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to DNS Fabrication and today we're going to be building more four link mounts for my Toyota axle housing that's going underneath my Suzuki Samurai. What I have in my hands are the previous mounts we built in the past episodes and these are going to clip right onto the outside of this housing for my lower links. Our goal for today is to use this axle truss, which we built in the past episode, and we're going to be building some mounts for the upper links. So those are going to integrate and look something like this. We need to design those out on SolidWorks, cut them on the table, just like our past episodes with every other product. It's pretty fun. And if all goes to plan, we're going to have this all tacked together. We're going to slide it under the Samurai. We're going to marry it up to the frame side mounts. I'm hoping we can cut some DOM tubing, put everything, bolt it all together, have it all tacked, and then cycle this suspension up and down, just to make sure that all of our hard work is actually functional and we don't need to go back to the drawing board. If we can make that work, I'm gonna feel a lot more confident about this build. We can finalize a lot of the stuff we built on this rear end, and then we can finally start getting up to the front. And that's where some of my main challenges are gonna be is on the front. I hope you guys are excited as I am. And if you are, be sure to stick around because this is gonna be a great episode. Well, we've got these mounts cut now for these upper link axle side mounts. We've got two sets of them, so one for each side. And I haven't done any of these back plate pieces yet. I'll get to that after I try to confirm that these look good. So what I'm concerned with is the spread of how far these are apart. So in my calculator, I had them set to about five and a half inches. And I've dialed that in about as close as I can. I want them to be centered within this axle housing it needs to be 27 inches off the ground. And we're basically right bang on with 27 inches at the center of that bolt. So I think I'm pretty happy with where these are sitting. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these together. And then we're gonna cut the back pieces, which are some little, little bit of extra support uh, just for the structural lateral movement of that mount. Can't spend too long on these, otherwise you'll be taking forever with these builds. I'm gonna call it good enough. If you noticed, I do have some pieces of steel in between my misalignment spacer and the mount itself. So what that serves a purpose for is just providing a little bit of a clearance fit for these heim joints. So the heim joints from surface to surface on the outside of the um, misalignment spacer is exactly two inches. On some of the previous mounts I've done, I went ahead and just put the side plates together, bolted it on, welded my structure. And what I found with that is that it was very hard to get those uh, rod ends back in. So what I want to do with this side is just put a little bit of a clearance washer in there. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start tacking this together and we're gonna start finalizing this truss.
Last night I was able to finish off these mounts. So I put the lower link mounts onto the axles and I positioned them just like they are in the four link calculator. So the numbers I ran with is I have 20 inches in the Y direction, which means from the center of the axle housing out to the center of my mount, it's 20 inches. We dropped it about an inch below the center line of the tires or the wheels. So we're sitting at 17 and a half inches off the ground. And then in terms of uh, the other distance, the X distance, we're sitting at about three inches because we have a three inch round housing. And I put it about an inch and a half away from that housing. The top mounts we finished off as well previously. They're not entirely done. I still need some boxing in to do on the back side. I have those pieces cut. I just haven't put them on yet. And these ones are set at a five inch spread. So two and a half inches in the Y direction. And then they're sitting at um, a total of nine inches higher than my lower mounts, which is about a quarter of what my wheel diameter is gonna be. I'll be running a 37 inch tire. Half of that's 18 and a half where the center line of the housing is gonna be. And then I ran about nine and a quarter separation between the two. So everything is pretty much dialed in. I need to run over these tack welds. Everything is placed on here, but I wanna make sure that when I actually bolt up these links, they're not gonna snap off very easily. I'm okay if they snap off if there's binding because that's the whole point of this testing is I don't want it to bind. And if we do start popping mounts off, then I know that maybe there's a little bit too much binding going on. Now what I'm dialing in are the rest of the mounts, just making sure that we're looking good before we put everything in. And I'm also calculating my thread engagement on my rod ends. So these are the mounts that we built in one of the previous episodes. Definitely go check those out if you haven't seen that yet. That was a really fun build. And I've already assembled my heim joints on here. So we've got our misalignment spacers, the heim joints and the weldable bungs that are gonna go into my DOM tubing. So these are gonna have to get placed and tacked onto the frame of the Samurai. So we're gonna have to do that right now. And then as I mentioned, I'm going through um, and calculating the thread engagement for my rod ends. And the reason I'm doing that is because I bought uh, half left hand and half right hand rod end threads. So that way when I'm on the trail or when I'm assembling the suspension, when I have the rod ends put in with the full link, I can just physically turn that tube and I will either lengthen or shorten my link because I'll be able to um, have opposing left and right hand threads on either end of that link tube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to set these rod ends up at uh, three quarters of an inch of exposed thread. That's gonna be half an inch length for our jam nut and a quarter inch length for any tolerancing and moving around of the link length. So this being six inches shorter is gonna give me an exact 36 inch long length of a link from eye to eye of these bolts on the rod ends. After about 100 times of measuring, we got these DOM tubes sorted out. I don't know if I've really described what I'm using here for you guys, so I'll go over that now. I end up running with two inch outer wall. This is tube. So it's two inch outer wall and it's quarter wall thickness. So those are gonna be used for my lower lengths. Definitely big and beefy. And that's because I wanna be able to slide those over rocks with confidence. And then from the upper lengths to try to save some cost as well as saving some weight, I'm using DOM again, uh, but this one is going to be inch and three quarter outer diameter and 120 wall, which puts this a little bit larger than inch and a half inner diameter.
there we have it. We got all four links tacked together with the bungs on here. I did remember to put the right hand and left thread on. I feel like it's a pretty easy thing to overlook and forget while you're doing this. So I made an effort to mark right hand thread on all the proper ones. So I have all the bolts ready on the axle side and it really is just a matter of threading the tubes on, the actual links. And then we're gonna hopefully not have any issues with binding here. I'll be honest with you, feeling a lot of emotions with this. This is feeling extremely surreal for me. I have been doing nothing but staring at this concept, either on paper and SolidWorks, or just rallying out designs in here. And this feels like a pretty incredible milestone. I was just able to cycle this axle up and down. I even sent one side to full stuff at full bump stop with the other end of the axle resting on the ground and we had no binding. These links are looking good. We had no collisions. I'm all around very impressed with it. It not only just looks badass, but feels quite accomplishing looking at this, honestly. As I'm sure you can tell when we had this stuffed up in some of those, uh, some of that footage there, there's gonna be a lot of cutting to the samurai body. And the first challenge for this rear axle was just to get to where we are now. We're just starting the next challenge, which is actually making it work and making it feasible with cutting up this body. So I do have some 36 and a half inch swampers that I'm gonna use, they're just rollers, but I'm gonna use those tires and wheel combo just to do some of this sizing. Um, what we'll do is we'll throw one on here. We'll start pushing the axle up and see how things are looking at full bump with a tire essentially finding our full bump with a tire. Cause I don't want to chop the whole back of this off. I want to still keep it looking like a Samurai, but we 100% will need to cut this up. And just with this first look, I think we might need to cut out these wheel wells. I actually rebuilt these wheel wells two years ago. That's all my custom work I'm going to be cutting out, but that's fine. This is going to look pretty wicked and uh, I think it's worth it. I am going to finish that up here I need to get home, I need to get some sleep. We need to just feel happy about where we got to today. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this journey. If you are, please consider subscribing. It definitely helps us out. We're gonna keep pumping out these videos and continually rallying on the Samurai because we need to get to that front axle and we're very, very close to that. Well, thank you again, everyone, and we'll see you next time.